Hi everyone. So today we are going to draw our names in perspective. So how this is going to work is you are going to need a piece of paper and you are also going to need a pencil and a ruler. So the first thing we're going to do is at the top of your paper we're going to put in our vanishing point. This is where we're going to draw all of our uh, converging lines back to. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to put in some guidelines to help keep our letters straight. So make sure that my ruler is nice and straight. I think that looks okay. Stand up just to make sure. Okay. So I'm going to draw in. For some reason this feels a little off. <laughs> Alright, I'm going to draw in two sets of lines. Just kind of mark in where my letters are going to go. So this is going to act as a little guide to make sure that my letters are all the same size. Okay, great. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to sketch in my name. So my name is Melissa, but for the sake of this video, I'm going to do a different one, uh, a different name, just so that I'm not drawing out a million letters. But here's what we're kind of going for. So there's my name all drawn out, uh, nice and ready to go. Okay, so for the sake of this project, I'm going to do uh, my son's name, which is Jack. So I'm going to kind of measure out and kind of put in very lightly boxes so that the letters are pretty even. Maybe I actually should be drawing these out two inches. So I actually nailed that one right on the head. So I'm going to mark out two inches here. The, my lines are at least all consistent. Now you're, you might have, you know, more letters where you're going to need your spaces to be a little less than two inches. Um, but it's good to kind of keep your letters the same size. So I'm just kind of marking out the letters, two inches. Okay, great. I've got my little boxes, so now it kind of will help restrict how big I'm going to be drawing out my letter. So now they're all nice and the same size. Okay, so I'm going to take my ruler and I am going to start to draw in the letter J in the box. So I need it to come down. You might not always get it perfect the first time. Oh, that's good. So with a curved letter, so with a with Jack, you can do one of two things. So he, the bottom of the J is curved, so you can make it more um, like geometrical, where you've got like almost like football letters, Letterman letters that way or what you can do is what I'm going to do is I'm going to use that but then I'm going to start to kind of freehand it a little bit and curve it. You can also take something like a the bottom of a coffee cup and kind of trace it. Yeah, sorry, I had coffee in here this morning. Um, just to make sure that your lines and your curves are nice and even. Because I'm pretty good at this, I'm just going to freehand it. Can't touch it up. All right, there's my J. Okay, then for the A, let's see. Just kind of trying to mark out where I want my parts to go. J. A. Okay. 
So sometimes I sketch in the lines just to make sure it kind of feels right, and then I'll go in with an actual ruler to make sure it's nice and straight. Okay, so J, A, C. So again, for the C, I could do more of like a geometric kind of C where it looks, you know, something like this. Or I can kind of sketch it on in, which can be a little bit trickier. So if sometimes it's just easier just to do a geometric C. Okay, great. Now I've got the name all written out. So now I'm going to kind of mark off the points that I'm going to have to draw back towards for um, the perspective. So I'm going to need these, some of these down here. Same thing with my A. I'm going to draw from here, here, this point, this point, and then here, here. And then for a curve C, I try to go to the, like the outer point for the C, so probably about here. And my K, my K is going to have lots of them. Here, here. All right, so now I'm going to take my ruler and I'm going to line those up and I'm going to draw all of those lines back to the vanishing point. So down here, for this one, I'm just going to draw it until I hit my letter, and then I'm going to stop. Make sure it's lined up. So I also need like a point down here. So I usually try to take the widest part, so I'm probably going to line it up right here at the bottom of my J. Now I'm going to do my A. So I don't think that this one is technically going to show from down here. So I'm lining it up, and yeah, I wouldn't see it because it's going to intersect with my A. So that's what I thought. So it looks like I'm just going to be probably doing the top and then the bottom. So. Pretty straight back. Always make sure it's lining up with the horizon line. So I need to also do the inside of my A too. So I'm going to do it from this corner. Ooh, might not even show. Okay, so because, so I'm looking at it and I'm lining these two up. And it looks like it's going to be right on the edge of my A. So I'm not going to see that corner. So that's actually okay. And that might also happen here down as well. Okay, so I don't have to worry about it down there. Um, yep, okay, let's do the C. Okay, so my widest point in my C is like here. Okay. 
and over here. And then I gotta do, oops, that line was definitely crooked. Oopsie, always make sure it's lined up up there. Even art teachers make mistakes, okay? And I gotta do it down for these bottom pieces, but I'm gonna just stop once I hit that C. And okay. Yeah, there. Don't think I'll see it here. I'll see a little bit, so I'll just kind of have it go back until I hit that C, and then it's going to stop. C. Yeah, you're not going to see that bottom one because of the angle. Okay. So now what I can do is I'm going to just erase. Actually, you know what? I lied. We need to use a fine tip pen. I'm going to mark all of this in. This is a little bit. Let's get a sharpie. And it's really time consuming, and I apologize for that. So, you want to do this before you erase all your pencil lines because I would hate for you to accidentally. Erase the wrong line and then have to go in and fix it. I know it's really tempting just to, it's even really tempting for me because I'm really good at drawing straight lines, um, to just wing this without the ruler because it would be faster. I get that temptation, but it's not worth it. Don't do it. Just take the time. And make sure you're double checking. Uh, there's no going back with the permanent marker. It's tough to kind of hide or fix a boo boo. Here's my J. J is done. Okay, let's finish up my A.
This is so tedious. Hmm? just turned off in my classroom because there wasn't enough movement. Just double checking this line. Alright, I think I can get a little line in there. It's going to be a very sharp angle, but it is there. Let's see something down here. It might be a very sharp angle, but it might be there. Yep, it's teeny tiny. Just seeing just a little blip of it. Okay, J-A-C. Seventeen minutes. Good lord, I thought this was gonna be a quick video. It is not. I apologize, friends. It's gonna be worth it. double-checking. Almost there, we're almost there. Okay. And the, oh, I forgot one little line down here. Yep. Okay, so once you have that all done and whew, that took forever. Then, and only then, where is my eraser? You are going to grab your eraser and then you can erase carefully. Don't rip your paper. All of those lines, those pencil lines that we no longer need. And then we can start adding in some color. Now, when you start to add color, you want to, well, first of all, it'd be really fun. So I'd like you to, in each of the letters, draw in something that kind of represents you. So I did a paint palette for art. I like going to Red Wings games. I like Harry Potter, coffee, Disney, teaching, and this is for my pets. Um, so draw in some things that kind of represent you. And when you go to color, make sure that you choose a color for like the sides to create that illusion like it's going down and it's kind of like a, a corner. The light's not going to be hitting in there so it's going to be in shadow you want to choose a darker color to create that illusion that this you know is kind of tucked in and down so I, when i was doing like the brown for example i did all of this with like this kind of tan color and then i chose a darker brown if you don't have a darker brown or like a darker red for example so i had two different types of red but i wanted a variety of red 
I just color mix, so I mixed two different kinds of red to create this really dark red. Um, same thing over here. I had I didn't have a darker purple, so I took a blue to kind of create that darker color down there. So this is what the end result looks like. So make sure that you draw in some stuff that represents you, and then we're going to add color using color pencils. Make sure you're using some color mixing, so putting and mixing two different colors to make a new color. I did this here it, um, on my paint palette. Um, I also did it, like I said, in here. Um, it gives you a much more r vibrant and rich color, and it also makes things pop. And you need to use some value, so going from dark to light. For areas that are curved, what you want to do, so like my S's, for example, and I would have to do this on my C for Jack. When you are um, coloring, you want to make sure, don't go back and forth to create the illusion that this is round. You need to do directional shading, which means I'm kind of curving almost like in a rainbow or a U shape, and that's going to give that illusion that your S or your C or whatever letter O even is rounded. Okay, so make sure you're curving like a rainbow. All right, guys, when you are done, make sure you take a picture and submit it to Google Classroom to get some credit. Thanks. Bye.